very warm welcome to our service today. It's lovely to see you on a long weekend. I know many people have flown the Auckland confines of the city to uh, journey outside our, our borders and to enjoy outside of Auckland. But for those who've remained, hopefully you have been able to take some time out to enjoy what Matariki means. A very special warm welcome to Russell, who is from Lee Dev Langham, and he is going to be our preacher today. Uh, Russell was meant to be preaching last year, but we went into restrictions and lockdown, so he wasn't able to join us. Russell has a, a theological degree and has spent many time, years at uh, Kerry Baptist, so we look forward to you opening up the scripture, but also bringing in a little bit about what your company represents and how you work with people in the um, South Pacific and Asia. And also a warm welcome to Anita, who is our guest Organist today, uh, Antoinette is away, so Anita is kindly filling in for us, so thank you very much, Anita. We've got a couple of moving around of hymns from where they are normally put, so just to be aware of that, we'll lead you through it. Why don't I just open up in prayer before we stand for our opening hymn. Loving God, we thank you that we have the freedom to gather here this morning. Whatever situation we've come from, whether that's been a sort of a rushed out the door or whether we've actually been able to ease into church gently. Help us to, to leave our outside cares to one side for a little while. As we come to worship you, as we come to be challenged, as we come to be comforted, as we come to hear from you through scripture, prayer and music. These things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. We come to worship God, we come to praise God. And what a wonderful way to open up our service. I invite you to stand as we sing. Well, good morning, everybody. What a wonderful, stirring start to the, to the service. Uh, perhaps if you'd all like to sit, um, we'll wish our young folk on their way. With a prayer, loving God, we give thanks for the young amongst us. They are our hope. They're our future. Yeah. They're our joy. So we ask that you're with them this morning as you are with us in this church today. Uh, the service this morning, if you'd like, if you prefer to follow in the prayer book, is from page 476. 
Etifana Takaraiti, welcome to this holy table. Welcome to you, for we are Christ's body, Christ's work in the world. Welcome to you, whose baptism makes you salt of the earth and light to the world. Rejoice and be glad. Praise God, who gives us forgiveness and hope. Amen. Christ is our light, the joy of our salvation. Praise and glory to Christ, God's new beginning for humanity, making ritual water, gospel wine, cleansing our worship. Love and loyalty to Christ, who gives us the gospel. Praise to Christ, who calls us to holiness. Well, Christ is the living water, cleansing, refreshing, making all things new. Christ is the living bread. Food for the hungry, strength for the pilgrim and the labourer. So now we offer our thanks for the beauty of these islands, for the wild places and the bush, for the mountains, the coast and the sea. We offer thanks and praise to God for this good land, for its trees and pastures, for its plentiful crops and the skills we have learned to grow them. Our thanks for Marae and the cities we have built for science and discoveries, for our life together, for our Aotearoa, New Zealand. Christ is the good shepherd who knows and cares for every one of the sheep in different folds. In Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile. In Christ there is no discrimination of gender, class or race. In Christ the poor are blessed. The simple receive truth hidden from the wise. Alleluia. God of justice and compassion, you give us a work to do and a baptism of suffering and resurrection. From you comes power to give to others the care we have ourselves received so that we and all who truly live in harmony and trust. So now we come to the time where we seek forgiveness and we have the, the blessing of God's compassion and forgiveness. We come seeking forgiveness for all we have failed to be and do as members of Christ's body. In God there is forgiveness. Loving and all-seeing God, give us, forgive us where we have failed to support one another and to be what we claim to be. Forgive us where we have failed to serve you and where our thoughts and actions have been contrary to yours, we ask your pardon. Mate atua i muru o Kotohara ki Motorongo. God forgives you. Be at peace. Rejoice and be glad for Christ is resurrection, reconciliation for all the human race. We shall, we shall all, all be, be one, one in Christ, one in our life together. Praise to God who has created us. Praise to God who has accepted us. Praise to God who sends us into the world. And our sentence this morning comes from Luke. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And we say the prayer of the day together. Living God, the prophets faithfully serve you, fearlessly speaking your truth. Grant us courage to follow their example and witness to your truth so that we may live lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Right, let's sit for the first readings. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings, chapter 19, beginning at verse 15. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. 
When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nebsha, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel, Meloha, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The New Testament this morning is from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, first verse, and then uh, verses 13 to 24. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, are called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires and since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit hear what the spirit is saying to the church thanks be to God Before we have our gospel reading today, I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing the hymn, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. Please stand.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 9, beginning at verse 51. Praise and glory to God. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man was no was nowhere to lay his head. Has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Lord. It's lovely to be with you this morning. You please be seated. My name is Russell Thorpe. I'm the executive director of Lee Dev Langham. It's a bit of a mouthful. It's really two organisations rolled into one. So if we look at our first slide, we can see there that we're affiliated to, we managed to get those slides up, um, two networks, the uh, Overseas Council Network and the Langham Partnership. Of course, John Stott Ministries became Langham Partnership. It's named after... Langham Place, where All Souls is in London. So uh, that organisation was at the heart of John Stott's idea of being able to bring resources to the majority world church. So we have expertise and, and experience in fundraising, cross-cultural communication and theological education. And our vision is to see servant leaders in Asia Pacific equipped and engaged in mission who can teach and apply the word of God in their context. It's lovely to have Liz Lim, who's on your vestry, on our board. We have a number of people like this around the country on our board who partner and help us in this ministry. It's been going for around 25 years in New Zealand, but our work is facing outwards. We raise money and funds in New Zealand to join the gap between the resources the church needs to grow and what we have here in New Zealand. Just to give you an idea, on our next slide, it tells us a little bit about the status of global Christianity. Believe it or not, there are around 72,500 people coming to Christ every day. That's around 500,000 people a week. And of course, in New Zealand, we don't experience that quite the same, but it's very much a part of the majority world, which is not the Western world at the moment. And if each church has 100 people, then there are 725 churches needed each day, and there are pastors and people that need to lead those churches. Well, what would it be like if we didn't have a trained pastor or a trained vicar? How many places in New Zealand don't have that? There are between eight and nine out of every 10 pastors in the world who are untrained. And that leaves a shallowness to the depth of what could happen in church life and in Christian community when people are untrained. If you're interested in looking at those statistics, they're on the two websites that I mentioned there. I have not just created these figures. They are very real. Most Christian charities are humanitarian, and we raise money for groups like World Vision, to, for crises, Tear Fund, and so on. There are very few charities that exist to train the leaders and the shortfall of leaders that we have. We are one of those organisations. The need is urgent, and so I want to impress on that for you today. Please afterwards go and have a look at the uh, bookstall that the 
the books we've got out there, a couple of Bible commentaries that have been uh, worked on by Langham and some other resources that we're about. So let's talk a bit about our readings this morning. And I have this question, what about happiness? What about happiness? It doesn't seem to appear there, but it's all around it. In Luke, our reading in Luke, um, verses 51 to 62, we see the first little part of that in verse uh, 51. Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He had something on his heart, on his mind, and he had a bent to go towards it. He was going there by hook or by crook, in a sense. My mother always knew that I was always interested in sport because I would always be having the radio on and, uh, or watching the TV or up early in the night to listen to an all-black game if they were touring. Uh, those are the sorts of things I was resolutely set towards in my younger years, still am to some extent, but Christ is centre. Now, in that particular story of Jesus and his calling to people to follow him, he makes it hard for the first guy to follow him because he tells him that, well, there's nowhere, I've got nowhere to sleep. If you follow me, it's going to be tough. And then there are a couple of people that want to follow Jesus. And what do they do? They want to do something with their family first before they go and follow him. And, of course, the allusion from the Old Testament reading is about the plough and looking back. And, of course, if you look back when you're ploughing, you're not going to plough straight. You're going to make a crooked line, which is a bit of a problem. And so he says in verse 62, anyone who puts a hand to the plough and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So how do we think about that? I was just thinking and reflecting on it, and I'm certain that this is part of the point that Jesus is trying to make, that he is concerned about the bigger picture, not just our own family circumstances. And he wants us, if we're following him, to be thinking about the bigger picture of what God is about through Jesus in the world. There is life beyond us, and there's life beyond ourselves. And it seems to me that in this story of life, that sacrifice is central to following Jesus. I'll explain that a little bit more as we go on. It is a disposition of our heart. So where is our heart leaning? And so the two questions I want to leave as we move on from this passage is this one. What does come follow me mean for you? It seems that in God's kingdom plans, sacrifice is central. I want to tell you the story about Max and Marnie. On the next slide, we have his story. Now, Max and I taught at Christian Leaders Training College when I was the Dean of Studies there for a number of years in Papua New Guinea. Maxon was in the military before he came to the college, and he did his BTH there, and then later on did his master's degree. And then he was selected as a PhD candidate to go to Otago to do his PhD. There were quite a number of Kiwis who sacrificially gave to make this happen. It costs around $60,000 a year to put a student through Otago. And then we had to pay for the rent on the house and all the other things that go with that. And some churches down there sacrificially gave furniture and helped out regularly with, uh, you know, vouchers from the supermarket and so on. It was very cold to come from Papua New Guinea, where it was very warm, to Dunedin. And the first week they got there, it was snowing. So it was pretty tough. He was making quite a sacrifice with his four children and his wife, coming into a completely different culture, and yet the sacrifice came from Kiwis to enable that to happen. I love it when God brings the dots together and the resources of his church and his people are able to help this to happen, to bring leadership training where it's needed. And Maxon's thesis was not some pious, unusable PhD. It was about a marital violence in Papua New Guinea, a theological critique and response investigating the relationship of the concept of name which is associated with power that plays out in relationships of violence between husbands and wives in Papua New Guinea. And he's explored this. He will, this will eventually be written up into a book, but at the moment he's been doing seminars with other universities and with uh, people in Papua New Guinea who are trying to explore how they can resolve some of the problems in family violence. Family violence in Papua New Guinea is very high. And even amongst Christian families, it's quite a problem. So Maxon is a very useful graduate of Christian Leaders Training College and a graduate of Otago who has helped to get to where he is today in leadership as the principal of that college in Papua New Guinea. There he is the dean, but he's now the principal. 
and it was the resources of people here in New Zealand that enabled that to happen. So this is just one example of the way that we work as Leadership Development and Langham together to bring about something of a resource for the church. A person trained, and his wife, by the way, grew while she was here in New Zealand in a lovely way, and she makes a real contribution with Maxon at the college. Next slide, what about happiness? And then looking at Galatians 5, 13 to 15, to emphasize firstly in verse 1, the point that Christ has truly set us free. We are so often in bondage to various things, addicted, maybe, to some things, and we have our wants and our desires, and so what Paul is trying to say is, Christ has truly set us free. What does that mean for you and me? And then he says in verse 16, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. And I like to use this word posture around this. You know, if you're going to play a game of rugby well, if you play in the forwards, you have to have the right posture when you're in a scrum. You have to have the right posture, as we're finding out, when you tackle somebody. And posture is so important in the everyday things of life. What are we leaning into? Is it obvious what you're leaning into? When I talk to you, if I talk to you later, and you tell me about what excites you in life, will it be about your business and your money making and all those sorts of things? Those are genuinely good things, but it's what you're leaning into. And there are some other things, I think, that what Paul is talking about brings some depth and love and especially joy into life and has something to do with happiness. So he says in that passage that following the desires of the sinful nature equals not inheriting the kingdom of God. So how do we lean? How do we have the right posture? It's got something to do with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit gives us the desires that lead to fruit. And of course, the fruitfulness was expressed as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness, and self-control. So the life of sacrifice is to nail the passions and desires of the sinful nature to the cross, to put those in the place where Jesus deals with them, and then to live by the Spirit, following the Spirit's leading into every part of our lives. That includes my business, my home life, my pleasures, you know, my friendships, and so on. I want to tell you Dwee's story. This is on the next slide. Dwee Maria is an Indonesian. She lives in Bandung. She is a lecturer at Bandung Seminary currently, but she was living on the streets when she first came to Christ, and she attended a church, and as a young woman, she felt the inadequacy of the preaching at the church, and so she sought out some training to help her begin to preach, and she got that through Langham's Preacher Training, a program partly funded by Kiwis like yourselves, supporters who would support that ministry, and it transformed her. And with more experience in preaching and preacher training and a sponsored PhD in Old Testament, Dwee became a Langham Preaching Associate Director for Asia under the mentorship of a Kiwi you may know, Dr. Paul Windsor. Now her involvement has led to the multiplication of preachers through training the trainers with as many as 1,500 preaching groups all around Indonesia today who are training people in preaching. This is a real resource for the church when you know they're lacking training. They have the resources of the Bible commentaries that Langham produces. If you want to have a look at one for Africa and one for Asia, they're both sitting out on the table out there. Have a look later. They take an awful lot of work to put together. They need people who've done some training. But Dwee is one of those people. If you want to find out a bit more about Dwee, look up on YouTube, Theology on the Street. She's got some lovely videos there talking a bit about how to preach and so on. It's quite useful. And her own ministry of working on the streets there comes out in previous videos. Ones that are a bit older. That's Dwee's story. Next slide there. So, authentic happiness is about God. Do you know, as we chase things in life, as we think about success, as we think about what it means to leave a legacy, there are many interesting options. And the options are good, but I want to suggest they're not probably quite good enough. There is money, there is having a good reputation, there is being famous, there's being powerful, it's having good health, 
experiencing pleasure. These things are all good in, uh, in and of themselves. But authentic happiness is possible only when we choose to live for that which is outside the material world and indeed that which makes the material world possible, and that is God himself. And so we either aim for God and live a meaningful and authentically happy existence or live for something other than God, other than truth and goodness itself, and slip into meaningless. And can I just say in our Western culture, we slip into this easily even as Christians because we live in a dualistic world. We tend to think of the spirituality of life as something different from our everyday lives. I want to say it's entwined. And if anything Maori culture tells us, and Papua New Guinean culture, and Melanesian culture, and African culture, and Asian culture tells us, life is intertwined. It is not separated into those two worlds. We cannot separate the work of God from our business, our family, or anything else, or even our pleasures. It's got to be part and parcel of the same deal. And authentic happiness is only possible if we live for that which is greater, God himself. And this requires sacrifice, the greatest sacrifice. Jesus leads the way in all of this for us, doesn't he? And that's what we celebrate as we celebrate communion every week. This is what brings the posture back for us. The significance of living a life entwined with God. It is communion itself. What a wonderful picture as we do take communion later. This is what distinguishes meaning from expedience. Expedience is to live without sacrifice. And that is to lose everything while meaning is to embrace sacrifice. So getting back to Lee Dev Langham, there are some opportunities for you to be a part of what we do. Currently, we are going to have a student at Otago University. He's already started studying online there, but because the government has taken a while to open up the visa situation, he's arriving in August with his family to study at Otago under the people there to do his PhD. So he can go back and be even more useful back in his seminary. The idea is, if they've got enough PhD graduates at Bandung Seminary, where he is coming from, they will be able to teach their own PhDs, and they can be much more learning in a context and culture which helps them in the church in Indonesia. The cost of those studies comes to around $60,000 a year. If you'd like to sponsor that, that would be about $5,000 a month for one student. And if we could have two of them, it would cost us around $10,000 a month for two of them for four years. That's about the length of time the commitment takes to get that done. Max and Marnie, by the way, before did his in three years. Another student did his in four. So it's around about that time period. The English version of the Slavic Bible commentary is another one there. Now, the Slavic Bible commentary was put together by Russian Christians and Ukrainian Christians. They have never worked really well together at the best of times, but they worked together well on this particular project. And we had a whole lot of these commentaries in English. They've been translated because English commentaries in the Slavic region, they've done by Slavic scholars. By the way, there's 18 seminaries in Ukraine, and many of them have been focuses for refugee help currently. Uh, but to put those together costs around a million to two million dollars. And so we are wanting to print off quite a number of these as resources for the church and for pastors who've lost their libraries and we need around $30,000 for that, uh, that particular um, promotion that we're doing. And then we're also trying to begin the workings on the Southeast Asian commentary which is really going to be written for Buddhist contexts. Again, that's a large donation. It's a legacy type thing that you could be involved in if you're interested. Or you could be supporting... 100 local preaching trainers every year in 30 different countries who will have trained 10,000 new preachers in the next few years. And that would cost around $100,000 a year. Now, these are big figures, but I'm just telling you we're about a big vision. We're an organization that wants to bring real change where we can with Kiwis to make a difference where we can. And we've figured out where these places are. Uh, so what about happiness? What about sacrifice? What do those things mean for you? What is your posture this morning? Do you want to be part of something much bigger than yourself and ourselves? You could be a part of our ministry by signing up. We've got a sheet out there to sign up. Or 
to receive our monthly newsletter or to actually be a part of one of these projects which would make a real difference to many, many people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for having the opportunity for sharing the word of God with you this morning. I'd love to chat with you after you if you're interested. Bless you all. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to pray for Russell and the work that he's doing. I'll just put my microphone on for a minute. Um, just for a minute. Let's, just, uh, let's just pray for Russell and the work that his and her organisation is doing. Loving God, we thank you for Russell's passion. We thank you for his energy and his vision. And we thank you foremost for your guidance of him, that at some stage you said, come, follow me, and he's doing just exactly that, making sacrifices. And so we just pray for the work of his, the company that he leads, the work of the people around the world who are doing, uh, following through with preaching, with sharing the good news to all those there. May they all be strengthened by your guidance, strengthened by your power, strengthened through your Holy Spirit. So we ask for your blessing on this work. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen to that. Thank you, Russell. Uh, we'll now stand and affirm our faith in the words on page 481. You, O God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. You purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O God, are infinitely generous good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. My friend, it's my privilege to, to pray with you this morning. If you please sit on you. Loving Saviour Jesus, we gather today in your name, sure in the faith and knowledge that when we pray, our prayers are heard. Father, like the children that we are, we cannot expect our every wish to find your favour. But today, through our Saviour, we pray. Boy, do we pray. We pray with all that is in us because we pray for a world that is in disarray. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, our Father, your Son, <clears throat> Jesus, appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? We ask that the Spirit will appear to the men and women who lead humanity into war and famine and unmitigated pain and sorrow. Almighty Father and God of all, we intercede on behalf of all these desperate folk and on behalf of ourselves. May the Spirit ask, leader, leader, why do you persecute my people? So in silence, we offer a prayer with everything that is within us. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed Lord, closer to home, we pray for our country, this most beautiful land, Aotearoa. For so many recent decades, we have been blessed with an ever-growing harmony, a reconciliation of the past and a recognition of the joy and the colour and the contribution to our multicultural society that every different race, creed and colour brings. Lord, as Paul wrote, as we've heard this morning, love thy neighbour. We pray... That instruction, so simple yet so profound, will continue to be the cornerstone of our society and that we continue to grow and stand together as brothers and sisters of one nation in the eyes of the law as we are in the eyes of God. Let us bless the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Now we turn our attention to our homes, our church and our community. Jesus, we are blessed indeed that you walk with us every day and that you, that you will be there for us at the end. We pray for all the dear departed and those for whom their days on earth, earth, on this earth may not be so many. We pray for the sick, some of whom face the reality that they will not recover. We pray for those who care for them. May the Spirit guide and support them in all their work. And today we pray especially for our sister in Christ, Marjorie Glasgow. Sure in the certain knowledge that she is now with God's care. And we pray God's love on her and her family at this time. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, this morning we've asked for a lot of our Almighty Father. And in faith we know that we are heard. And so in faith we leave it to the divine wisdom of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit to guide humanity in the days, weeks and years ahead. And so in silence we now pray for ourselves. Finish with the prayer, thanksgiving, blessing, and praise be yours, God of the incarnation, because you care for us and for our prayer. May our love for you and our likeness to you be strengthened every time we pray. Amen. We come now to the time when we share the peace. I invite you to stand. Blessed be Christ, the Prince of Peace, who breaks down the walls that divide. The peace of God be always with you. Praise to Christ who unites us in peace. And I invite you to share those words or elbow pumps or whatever is comfortable for you. Offertory hymn, just a reminder that we're still not passing the bags up and down the pews. There is a box at the rear of the church. But our offertory hymn today is Go at the Call of God. Thank you.
loving God, we give you thanks for the gifts that have been given, food for the city mission and money for ministry in this place. May all those who receive be blessed. Amen. The Lord is here. God's spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed to give you thanks, most loving God, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, the pioneer of our salvation, one of us yet from the heart of God. For with your whole created universe, we praise you for your unfailing gift of life. Your love is shown to us, for while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In that love, dear God, righteous and strong to save, you came among us in Jesus Christ, our crucified and living Lord. You make all things new. In Christ's suffering and cross, you reveal your glory and reconcile all peoples to yourself, their true and living God. Through Christ you gather us, newborn in your spirit, a people after your own heart. Therefore, with saints and martyrs, apostles and prophets, with all the redeemed, joyfully we praise you and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, living God. For Jesus Christ, the one perfect offering for the world, who on the night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, shared for you and for many to forgive sin. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Therefore, loving God of all creation, in the suffering and death of Jesus, our Redeemer, we meet you in your glory here and now with this bread and this wine. We celebrate your great acts of liberation, ever present and living in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come. So with thanksgiving and hope we say, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we show forth. Your resurrection we proclaim. Your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May Christ, ascended in majesty, be our new and living way. In him we offer ourselves to do your will. Empower our celebration, our celebration with your Holy Spirit. Feed us with your life and fire us with your love. Confront us with your justice and make us one in the body of Christ with all who share your gifts of love. Through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, creator God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. And as Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth and in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. Christ is the bread of life. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ has risen from the dead. So come, God's people, come to receive Christ's heavenly food. I'd like to just be seated as the servers come forward. Just a reminder that as you come forward, we have hand sanitizer here as you make your way forward. Then we will have two stations of wafers. Beside that is the wine and the common cup and grape juice on the outer edge. At the moment, or at the, we don't intink, we don't dip our wafers into the common cup, um, but feel free to take whatever feels comfortable for you. So come, God's people, the table is ready.
Our prayer after communion. Mm. 
Blessed be God who calls us together. Praise to God who makes us one people. Blessed be God who has forgiven our sin. Praise to God who gives hope and freedom. Blessed be God whose word is proclaimed. Praise to God who is revealed as love. Blessed be God who alone has called us. Therefore we offer all that we are and all that we shall become. Accept, O God, our sacrifice of praise. Amen. Accept our thanks for all you have done. Our hands were empty and you filled them. So as we go from here called by Christ, taking up that challenge to sacrifice, may you hear God's calling on your heart and your lives. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer and giver of life be with you today and always. Amen. we have any birthdays or anniversaries or any celebrations that we can celebrate with you as a church family? No one's dobbing anybody else in. Mari, birthday. It's Anne Mercer's birthday and Anne Mercer's being very quiet in the back seat. Happy birthday, Anne. Have we got some chocolates going in that direction? Barbara, are you dabbling yourself in or somebody else in? Fantastic. So in case you just didn't quite hear, because I know sometimes for those who are listening online, they can't hear if we're not microphones. So Barbara was just uh, giving thanks for the over 1,000 trees that were planted at the Waiata Reserve. Our 13 or 14 people from St Aidan's didn't plant all those 1,000 trees. <laughs> Otherwise, I think our backs would be giving out. Um, but we did join a very large team, and it was wonderful to have the weather just hold off just to the right. It just started to rain just as we were getting our sausage that Izzy, um, Isabel and um, Kate were ably turning there on the, on the sausage sizzle. So thank you to all those helped that helped, and we look forward to being able to contribute again next year. Our notices and newsletters um, do have a little look through. Hopefully you will have received uh, an, an email that came out from me yesterday to say that this time last week somebody who attended church and then consequently went home and somewhere later on did find themselves to have COVID. So uh, the health department advised us and I advised you by the only way possible by that circular email. So hopefully you did get that. And what I just wanted to remind people was, is, you know, we encourage mask wearing. It's not compulsory. We can't make it compulsory, but we encourage you to wear a mask. When you come forward for communion, you choose what you want to engage with and how much, you know, when your mask comes off and all those sorts of things. Use the hand sanitizer. Um, and then similarly, afterwards, the hospitality is there for tea and coffee if you want to stay in and catch up with people. But that's when masks come off. So again, you monitor what you feel comfortable with. You know, on the majority of the time, we can meet quite safely and not have any further infections. And of course, you know, because we're an organization, we are advised that there was a sort of a, an event. Um, whereas when you go to a coffee shop, you're never told because they don't list down who goes to coffee shops anymore. So you could always be coming into contact with people who subsequently have COVID. But do keep each other safe, monitor your symptoms. If you want to know further, please let me know and I can sort of talk further about that. So just do what you need to keep yourself safe and others. A couple of things I do want to point out. Uh, the men's group who are meeting this week, do note they're meeting at a new venue. They're meeting at Piccolo's Cafe. So if you're someone who normally joins the men's group for the breakfast on Thursday, do note they're in a different cafe further down the road. See Kerry if you want to have further instructions on that. Um, do spend some time after the service, if you're able to, to have a look at some of the material that Russell has got there, um, particularly those large commentaries um, wonderful book so do talk to him further about it he's got pamphlets and things that you can take away to prayerfully consider what your involvement might be or just to sort of have a conversation with him pizza and movie night we've got our social get together coming up again some people are keen to get into that sort of thing and some people just a bit too soon so uh just be aware it's coming up put the date in the diary and there's a pizza and movie night to follow 
One other thing I do want to say is that we had really great intentions with our garage sale sort of reply slips for people to let us know whether you can help or you can't help. And unfortunately, the, the, the system that we used, we had 64 replies and we could only see the top 10. We had to sort of pay the extra to see the rest of them and it wasn't worth it just to sort of see the end of the results. So if you think you've told us something through that survey, maybe we don't know. <laughs> Um, however, some people have told us in passing, sent other emails, so we've got a bit of a, a feel for the, for the garage sale committee, and the sense is we're forging ahead with our big garage sale in September. We will see what volunteers we've got, but that's the plan. I know many of you are going to be relieved to get rid of those boxes you've been waiting to get rid of for about a couple of years. So more details later, but that is the plan to go ahead with the helpers that we can muster. Thank you to all that have contributed. Thank you to Anita. Thank you to Russell. Thank you to Nigel and everyone who's contributed to our service. Our final hymn, Go Forth and Tell, speaks of our need to tell the good news of God to others. So why don't we stand to conclude our service? <laughs>